Uh, hey, I'm Darcy Michael. I'm a stand-up comedian and actor based in Vancouver. Uh, I have had ADHD officially diagnosed for four years, five years now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a roller coaster. Uh, but it's something that I genuinely look back on going, oh my days, if only I could have known 20, 30 years ago, how different my life could have been. But not that I'm complaining, I have a great life. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, TikTok, it's been, uh, it's gotten even better. Uh, so I have ADHD to thank for that as well. <laughs> it's a weird one. I kind of just went through life you know like i'm older so like in the 80s and 90s you know like the history of adhd and and the it's the worst named uh com complex in the world uh because i wasn't a hyperactive kid uh, i i was just you know like my parents always called me busy like i was very busy and stuff but i wasn't properly diagnosed until i was 36 and it was never even really brought up before uh because it was just like no i'm just aloof or you know like i'm i, I don't care uh enough uh to be paying attention to when someone's speaking to me or whatever i and i'm not gonna not to name drop but it was actually uh bruce mccullough from kids in the hall him and i were working on a script together and the second day into this writing process he just said how long have you had adhd and I, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't. And he, the next day he brought his dog, Maple, who's this, like a golden doodle, who's just like a really chill dog. Uh, and she just sat on my lap and it was like a weighted blanket of love. And uh, so I just said, I was like, why do you think I have ADHD? And he's got experience with it. And he started to kind of be like, you know, like, do you know about the symptoms of ADHD? And, uh, and I really didn't. And so... I started kind of, you know, I did the the first step everybody does. I googled ADHD test, you know, and and I took it. And then I don't think I was fully honest when I took it. And so my first advice to anyone is if you have a spouse, a partner, a parent or siblings even, have them take the test as if they're you. Uh cuz I came home and my husband took the test and it was just like off the charts. Uh so I went and saw my GP and got a referral uh and just started going through the process and really uh it was a very quick, easy, you know, I was diagnosed ADHD combined. So I was the first step was getting, you know, I was prescribed something and kind of sent on my way. And that was uh, something that, you know, in hindsight, over the years, I've learned like, hey, there's a lot more to this than just taking a pill. Uh, and, you know, so I've, uh, it's really been, I'd say the last two years, diving into counseling, uh, and really finding tools that work. And then, you know, TikTok has been an amazing thing because I've actually learned more about ADHD. I didn't know about rejection sensitivity dysphoria. Like someone, no one had ever explained that to me. And I was like, I, I've i lost friends because of that. You know, like I have straight up just missed opportunities because of that. And I had no idea. I just thought I was overly sensitive and kind of nutty. But it yeah, it's been a really eye-opening experience and I just I feel like the more I l have learned about it the less shame and regret I have looking back at my life and just going okay neurodivergency is something that uh, is a great thing to be aware of because I can catch myself now I can go oh, okay like you're actually hyper focusing on that rsd right now because you know you you're trying to get dopamine <laughs> like let's find a way to to get it you know like and obviously i have hyper fixation with plants but they plants ground me like nothing else plants and my dog the medication was really hard to adjust to uh for me just because we couldn't get the dosage right right away uh it was way too, too high i was having like major anxiety attacks uh and the hyper focus was insane like the first day 
oh my, the the cleanliness of this house. Because I was just like, I need to do something. Like I was vibrating and I was just like floor to ceiling, three floors of the house were spotless. And then, you know, like the meds wear off and you just crash. And so it was also learning like what time of day to take the medication for, you know, like because of doing uh, stand up and touring, if I take the medication at 7 a.m., by 7 p.m. I'm crashing and I've got a show at nine. So it was like learning that I could adjust on the day when to take it uh, and also getting getting a dosage that really kind of worked for me was uh, it took about a year before I got to the point that I am now. Uh, the hardest thing for me still is to remember to take the meds, you know, like it's kind of a, a common theme with me, but uh, I've got a really, really amazing husband who's uh, who's on me for it. And, you know, like the nice thing is with this meds that I am on, I can take days off uh, from it and not have uh, withdrawal symptoms or anything like that. So there are days where it's like, you know, I'm, I don't have to get a lot done today. Uh, so I'm just going to let my brain kind of do its thing. And, uh, you know, I just let the bees in my head dance for a bit. Uh, but I think, yeah, it, it's been, uh, it, it took about a year. And since then I've been steady on the, on this dosage and it really is this dosage. Yes, there is a light switch for sure, but it's also learning the tools. I am, when it comes to things like this, like meetings and stuff, if you had asked me to do this at 4 PM, I wouldn't be able to, I know, I know my internal schedule and from 7 AM to 11 AM, that's when I'm the most productive when it comes to being able to sit at a computer and do things. But the rest of my day, I have to be physical. I have to be doing things like, uh, like gardening or walking the dog and stuff. So it's really finding the times that work. Uh, work with it and that's something I would have never thought of until in counseling they were like well when do you when do you want to be at your computer and I was like what like I'd never thought about that and then I was like well I do all my writing in the morning yeah I uh back to your point about the medication the medication is a cast but you still have to walk your foot around uh is how I kind of look at it I go okay my foot's not my foot's gonna heal in this cast but I'm the one that's still driving it around I uh, I yeah I think you know like because you do a, I personally reflected a lot on you know failed relationships jobs lost and uh and failures that you had in your life and you go uh and like missed opportunities because of it and so there's a bit of uh, a bit of a mourning period for that where you have to kind of get to a point where you forgive yourself and you go okay how with the knowledge I have today how can I prevent those mistakes again? Uh, and and so that's like, you know, I, I don't get mad at myself when I lose my car keys or when I leave a suitcase at the airport because I know like those are all trivial things. But if my ADHD affects someone uh, like personally, like if someone's speaking to me and I'm not able to, I don't hear them. I feel that that's when I'm like, oh, I'm hurting somebody. And that's when I need to be a lot more aware of, uh, of, you know, the tools I need and stuff. And, uh, one of the things that I never knew about is, and I can't remember the name of it, but I'm very much affected by noise. Uh, so if we're in a, if we're say you and I were having this conversation at a coffee shop, it it, it's not possible. So knowing that and removing myself from those situations, uh, one of the things that, you know, friends always hated going for dinner with me because I was just not, I was so aloof and not, not present. And so now it's like, can I come to your house or can you come to my house? Can I control the environment more so I can actually be present? Uh, so it's, it's those kind of little, little things. You kind of have to analyze what's where you're the problem as you know, I think that's, I don't like to consider myself the problem, but I know that, you know, ADHD for me has affected relationships. So I really, that's where a lot of my focus has been was how can I be a better spouse? How can I be a better friend? How can I be a better dad? How can I be a better dog owner? You know, like uh, we, I have to remind myself that my dog is a part of my life, but to her, I am her life. So even when I'm, you know, sitting on my phone, doing something and she's sitting beside me, like remembering that, you know, like petting her and, and being with her and stuff. She's been such a grounding force too, getting her. Yeah, it's, 
the education system failed me hard uh, because we didn't catch it. And, you know, I and I've learned again, uh, I I can't be told what to do in education. I need to be shown. You know, I learn by example. Uh, and that's something that education, you know, especially in the 80s and 90s, really didn't do. It was basically like, here's your history lesson. And it's like, well, don't don't tell it to me. Like, show it to me. I'm a visual learner. Uh, and so I I really didn't do well in school. I, I failed classes. I never did homework. Homework was just a nightmare for me. Uh, so I, I literally went through high school without ever doing anything. I had two really great teachers that maybe didn't know that the diagnosis was there, but knew that I needed to learn differently. And those those two teachers were the only reason I graduated school. But um, I, I look at it now and, you know, like friends that have kids that are getting diagnosed with ADHD, I, I, I just push them so hard to find a, find what they like and how they, you know, if they have a hobby or something, I'm like, watch how they learned that hobby and put that towards education. You know, like if, if watching hockey is how they became a great hockey player, then that's a visual learner and they need to learn that way. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, like anyone that has any sort of neurodivergency, the public school system is is just so flawed for it uh, and again noise you know the noise of a school like when i'm working i i really do need uh, it to either be silent or really chill music you know like there has to be a calm environment for me to be reading something or learning something before i'm you know bouncing off the brain walls It's a good, that's a great question. I don't actually really know. And I think, you know, my biggest issue with, uh, with my neurodivergency is I have a really terrible memory. I don't have a lot of, I can't think of specific things that I did as a kid that are different from today. Um, I, I look at it going, I, I know not to interrupt people as much. Uh, that's something that I, I learned the hard way as a kid because I was just very much like I have to blurt this thought out before I forget it. Um, it I think I've just before the diagnosis I had accidentally found tools to help me. Uh, I, I do as much as I complain about technology my phone is very helpful like I can if I can record thoughts down quicker with a voice memo uh, than I can write them. So that's how I do a lot of my, you know, like if I think of something in the car that I have to remember to do. So uh, I'll have all these voice memos. I know in the morning, the first thing I do when I sit at my computer is listen to the voice memos to be like, oh, okay, that's on my to-do list. So then I go from that into a handwritten to-do list. And it's, it's a process, but it's the process that works for me. Whereas as a kid, I don't think I had the emotional maturity to understand that I needed tools to, I, I was very frustrated with myself a lot. And uh, I was definitely depressed way more as a teenager um, than I am, you know, I'm a genuinely pretty happy dude these days. ADHD doesn't mean you're less than. It doesn't mean that you are stupid. It doesn't mean any of that. If anything, look at the history of some of the most successful people in business and entertainment and uh, inventions and uh, creators are people with ADHD. And there's a reason that we're good at that. And uh, I think the my biggest thing is that uh, finding either a therapist, a counselor, a coach, specifically that works in neurodivergency, not necessarily only ADHD, but finding that, finding someone as early on as you can to help you build those tools is essential. Uh, there is, you know, like we celebrate mental health uh, on our TikTok cha channel and on my, uh, when I'm on stage and stuff, and uh, there's no shame in therapy. They, these are people that want to help you uh, be the best version of yourself that you can be. And uh, when you are 
when you're a teenager or when you're going through so much change, you're physically growing, you're, you're emotionally maturing. Like there's puberty is a horrible thing when you're going through puberty and you're adding something, uh, like the diagnosis or even like fighting to get the diagnosis. That's a lot for a young mind to kind of comprehend. So I think that's the, um, that's my biggest advice is just to a, you know, be kind to yourself and understand that, uh, you are, you're an amazing person, but there are people there that are going to help you get even better. I definitely think I would, uh, I would have, if I could have done better in school, I'm smart, you know, like I, uh, I definitely, if I could have found a way to get better grades and go to university, I don't know if I would be who I am today. I'm happy with who I am, but it's definitely one of those sliding door moments, you know, like the butterfly effect, uh, where it goes, okay, like had I, you know, at 12 years old, had I found the tools that I have at 41, would my life be different? Yes. Absolutely. Um, I have no idea what I would have done uh, career wise, but I've also had, I bet you, we tried to add it up the other day. I think before I got into stand up, I had had 40 jobs in my, from the age of like 14 to 23. Uh, so it was definitely, you know, I went through a lot of, uh, a lot of jobs trying to find the thing that kind of, hit the dopamine the most. They, you know, they're hiring you to do a job. And if you can't do the job they're hiring you for, you know, like I got, I got written up all the time for being a distraction to other employees. Uh, I used to just think I was the class clown and looking back, I'm realizing, no, I was literally just trying to, you know, keep myself attentive enough by making it worthwhile going i was a bank teller for uh like six months and that was awful because you know i was just like having a hard time balancing at the end of the day because i was too busy talking to the customers while entering their information and stuff and uh you know like i think companies have come a long way since i i definitely am not in the best profession for ADHD now as a comedian as and as an actor uh, again just you know the uh, the visual and audio uh, distractions of being on stage can be really overwhelming it can give me a lot of anxiety but uh, when I get into the right zone it's it's really rewarding uh, and obviously you know it's worked out really well for me so uh, it's too late to turn back but uh, yeah I think there are I think that it's finding the right job for that person. Uh, and also understanding that sometimes you will only want to do something like a job for a little while. And then you will want to, you'll want to move on because it's not giving you that hit that you were getting and being aware of it. You know, like I don't, uh, I don't say no to things now until I take a second to analyze, am I saying no because I'm bored of that idea or because I don't want to do it? Uh, and a lot of the time I find it's like, well, no, I'm, I'm just bored of that. And so I don't want to do it. And it goes, okay, well, how can I not be bored? of that so I can keep doing that. Cause you got to work, you got to make income. Uh, and so it's, you know, like it's pivoting slowly. Like I was really done with touring stand up for a long time and then COVID hit, but I, I needed to still find a way to entertain. Uh, and so I started a stupid TikTok channel and, you know, 10 months later, it's been life changing, but, uh, it's one of those, sometimes I still, I, sometimes I get bored of TikTok and I go, but you know, like now you have this fan base that is expecting it. So what can you do to make it less boring for you? Yeah. You know, like we all know about, uh, Bell's annual, uh, mental health day slash tax write-off. Uh, 
I I don't want to hear it from McDonald's. I I you know I don't want to hear it from Bell. I I want to hear it from people that experience it, whether that is uh you know someone like a, a hockey player, or a celebrity, an actor, a singer, or whatever. I think it is on us, and uh, I never talked about it on stage ever until TikTok, and then I realized I was like, oh, there's there's a need here for people that want to feel okay with their diagnosis, whatever it may be. Uh, and I think some amazing entertainers have st stepped up. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, like I look at the actors union and how difficult it is to get uh, approved for therapy versus getting a prescription for antidepressants. Uh, even just the, you know, like the acting union doesn't cover my medication uh, because it's, I have to go through this whole, you know, paperwork nightmare to get it approved. Whereas it should just be the same as if they prescribed me a painkiller for a broken arm. You know, we really do have to look at mental health the same way we do when you break a bone or when you get cancer, it is a it's a disease or an illness that can be treated when diagnosed, you know, like and uh, there and that's the thing, like I, I look at uh, you know, like I was raised by um, my my dad was a police officer. I was surrounded by cops, and the amount of PTSD that is undiagnosed in these the things that the front line are seeing are like we we just need to we need to do more, and we need to be talking about it m more frequently. Like I I said, talk about being sad the same way you would talk about stubbing your toe. You know, like it's everyone can relate. And the more we are open about it, the better the conversation can become. Uh, I think the name of ADHD is the biggest misconception because, you know, like if someone pictures hyperactivity, then me sitting here and doing this interview is against what someone's perception of ADHD is. Uh, I think focusing on the fact that it's executive dysfunction is something it needs to be rebranded. I've said it for a long time, especially as I learn more and more about it. I, I oh my God, like the, the ADHD iceberg. I don't know if you've seen the meme but it's fantastic where it shows like the hyperactivity and then all the other symptoms that no one talks about um and it, so between hyperactivity uh and um I, I hate i even hate the word stupid uh but i know that it was you know like my generation was very much raised uh with the impression that people with ADHD were uh, not as smart uh, and i i believe that it's the other way around like i i genuinely believe that you know the, you know how they say we use 10% of our brain well maybe people with ADHD use 12% there's something there uh it's just finding the thing that that person is smartest about and then letting them just soar like, unfortunately, the uh, the wheels have been in motion for so long. And as we learn more about our own brains, uh, the physical system is just so in place, it's impossible to change. But uh, it can change. And I, you know, like I have a, a podcast about high school where we talk about, you know, I interview celebrities about their high school experience. And uh, every episode there is one there's one memory of a teacher that changed that person's life teachers are the front line of uh everything there there are our counselors there are nurses there are teachers there are parents they're everything uh, and so you know like i think that is where we should be starting the conversation is at the universities that are teaching these teachers that's where we need to start that's the only way we're going to change the system is if the next generation of teachers have the tools to be able to uh, train children, give them the tools to learn better. My oh, heart yeah. hurts for women that are in their 50s getting diagnosed because I know they're full of, uh, you know, they've re spent 50 years masking symptoms. Uh, you know, like there is an undiagnosed woman in her 50s is the is the Meryl Streep of life. Like no one is a better actor uh, because they have had to do it their whole life. And my it just it breaks my heart. Uh, so, you know, like I think men aren't as good as it at it as women. But masking is something that 
but you know like i can tell uh like pretty quick when i'm talking to someone i'm like oh okay like you might need a diagnosis Yeah, no, it's a superpower. Uh, I'm a great artist uh, because of it. You know, I, I have a beautiful home because of it. I love uh, home design. I, I love gardening. I know everything there is about plants because I've spent, you know, probably the last 20 years learning everything about plants because it gives me dopamine. Taking what I know about ADHD now and when I'm interested in something, I can take it and expand it and I can go, okay, like we're going to learn about it, but we're also going to put it into physical form. Like I could just sit and, you know, like watch videos on how to garden and stuff, but then it's like, okay, well now I'm going to try and learn my own little tricks of the trade. Uh, but I think I'm a, I'm, I think I'm a better artist because of it i think i'm a better performer because of it i uh, i think we can harness the superpowers for to do amazing things and you know like i i hope that uh people with adhd are more active in the community like what you guys are doing uh with your center is imperative to helping the next generation as well as this generation of people that are getting diagnosed late in life you know Yeah, I would, uh, I would definitely say, you know, if you want to dive into a rabbit hole on TikTok, just go in and type those four little letters and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to find a world of information there. Uh, but really it's, you know, I think I can't stress enough that there is no shame in having ADHD. Uh, and if anything, getting a diagnosis is just going to make your life so much easier uh, and finding the tools that work for you and your partner you know like i think it's really important that who you're spending your time with understands neurodivergency and specifically the symptoms that you experience so you guys can work together communicate better uh, one of the best things that we've ever come up with in my 18 years of being married to Jer is we learned about four years ago uh, when I'm doing something either on the computer or on my phone or doing anything that's requiring my focus if he would usually just come in and start talking and now he knows to either come in and ask for my attention or to just give me a little shoulder tap and I can just go no like I have to I'm in the zone uh, because before he would come in and just start talking and then I would get you know, kind of upset because I'd lose that thought. And anyone with ADHD knows that thought's gone forever. Like it's never coming back. Uh, and so then there you get resentment, you get anger, you're dealing with all these weird, wired, wild emotions. So the tools are essential for you and the people around you.